Given the choice of anyone in the world, whom would you want? Are we filming? Yes. Oh. I think so. Hello. Yep. Yes. Hello. Hello, world. Future generations. Given the choice of anyone in the world, whom would you want as a dinner guest? Um, well, I, I periodically get obsessed with people. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I get trapped into, like, YouTube mm -hmm. vortexes where I start, uh, getting very interested in usually oh, some kind of, like, extreme sports figure or musician. In the past, it's been John Frusciante from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. It's been uh, Laird Hamilton, who's a big wave surfer. Uh, it would be somebody that would have like amazing stories that I could just sit and listen to. So uh, I'll go with uh, yeah. I mean, Laird Hamilton would be a good one. Just somebody who's had experiences that are like totally outside of like my realm of experience. Mm -hmm. Something like that, yeah. Got it. Would you like to be famous? In what way? I mean, I guess if I wanted to be famous, it would be for something that like I've accomplished, you know, like something, something real that I've accomplished. I don't think I'd want to be famous for like, I don't know, like my looks or a situation I was born into. I think mm -hmm. that's, that's a curse. Uh, but I, I think being famous in general is probably somewhat of a curse. I think it sounds good, but the reality is probably not as good as the fantasy. So I'll say no. Before making a phone call, yeah. do you ever rehearse what you're going to say? Yeah, definitely. Why? Um, why? I definitely do it sometimes. I mean, I don't like write it out, but I definitely like kind of take a second and think in my mind how I'm going to word something if it's like a if I feel for some reason it's important that I get it right on the first time. Usually at work or something like that, I don't want to come off as a spluttering fool. <laughs> it's good motivation. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what would constitute a perfect day for you? Uh, a day in which I did something like outside of my comfort zone and did it well, and then felt a sense of accomplishment and relief at the end of it. That's my favorite feeling so I don't know what that would be but like mm -hmm. maybe getting up in front of a bunch of people and like giving a presentation or you know just handling a, a difficult situation well um, I think that would, that would be a perfect day I like that answer when did you last sing to yourself? I sing to myself all the time <laughs> I mean last night there's like yes. It's, I have a weird like, problem with that. What about to someone else? Well, I guess that counts too. Yeah, yeah. to you guys. Yes. That's great. Yeah. Uh, if you're able to live to the age of 90 and retain either the mind or the body of a 30 year old for the last 60 years of your life, which yeah. would you choose? Yeah, I don't really get this question. It seems pretty easy to me. I mean, we're saying like I could have like a 30 year old body but like go senile. That's, I, that's the I danger. Yes, yeah. I think body. It's, it's, a weird, it's a little bit of a weird question. I feel like I'd be able to keep doing things that I really like doing with a 30 year old's body for, you know, that would be, that'd be great. Yeah, I feel yeah, like that's more what, li that's more what ends up limiting people. Yeah. But maybe that's a, maybe that's a bias. Maybe that's just because, who knows. I also have a theory that uh, physical exercise is like more of a protective factor against like dementia than mm -hmm. like mental exercise, whatever that means, you know. But. It's not really based on much. Hello. I mean, it's known that. I mean, it's it's certainly known that exercise prevents uh, onset of dementia and Alzheimer's. Is it? Yeah, that's there's, uh, there's been studies showing that. Look at how smart I am. Yeah. I don't know. That. Um, in fact, I think it's also. I mean, mental exercise is also something you sort of described earlier, which is uh, like doing something outside of your comfort right, zone. Yeah. For me, that's really what mental exercise yeah. is. Yeah. It's challenging yourself. True. True. Do you have a hunch about how you will die? I think, yeah, I mean, my hunch is that it's going to be very boring. Like, I'm going to die in of old age, like most people do. Cool. Um, but Don't have that's to. just a hunch. That's, I think that's a good hunch. Yeah. For what in your life do you feel most grateful? Uh...
I guess, you know, my family, the support of family, I feel like that's something that, that not everybody has. It, it makes a huge difference in, you know, what you're able to, it's just, it's a huge setback if you don't have that. So I guess I'm grateful for that. If you could change anything about the way you were raised, what would it be? Um, I think maybe like praise came a little too frequently and too extremely as a kid. I think everything I did was great and wonderful and obviously that came from a good place, but as I get older I see that causes problems, you know, when you try to make it in the world yourself. That's not really how the world works. You know, people aren't lining up to give you praise and it can be a it can be a tough adjustment. So. That's really true. If you could wake up tomorrow having gained one quality or ability, what would it be? <laughs> um, off the top of my head, like, uh, like good navigational ability, because that's something that I just don't have for some reason, and I'm very self-conscious about it. Um, if a crystal ball could tell you the truth about yourself, your life, the future, or anything else, what would you want to know? Um, that's tough. I mean, I guess like my morbid curiosity would want to know like if I had sort of like pursued a different career path, or mm. if I had, you know, like what would have happened, but that, mm -hmm. that seems like that's, that's also like a, a dangerous road to go down. Um, What I want to know, maybe just like you know, am I sort of going in the right general direction? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's sort of. It's not. I don't think you're supposed to like know things that yeah. you don't know. <laughs> but I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> no, I hear you. I, I think yeah. I think that knowledge either is like it's it's either sort of like meaningless or yeah. it just like won't. You won't be able to assimilate it, whatever. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, is there something that you've dreamt of doing for a long time? Why haven't you done it? Yeah, like um, mostly like traveling, like cross country, like going cross country, or uh, you know, just you know, always wanted to like learn how to surf in a real way. Uh, why haven't I done it? I mean, I uh, a lot of reasons. I feel kind of like not fully established in my work and like you know don't really have the money to go do that and that sort of stops me most of the time um so that that would be the primary other, reason other things are higher priority right? yeah yeah so you're uncertain there um what is the greatest accomplishment of your life <laughs> 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 One time, one time I ate an entire pie by myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the greatest accomplishment of my life. Um, I guess the easy answer is like my PhD, but that doesn't really feel like that doesn't really feel like an accomplishment right now. I guess like more generally, just sort of pursuing something that you know I feel like I'm good at and that would be fulfilling. Um, I think was maybe maybe my, my greatest accomplishment to date. There are so many. Is getting I have is, a hard is, time picking. <laughs> you, so you mean like getting into a track where you feel like you actually are yeah, so like something that's fig, yeah, yeah like fig, figuring out yeah um, a path that like would ultimately like use my talents and abilities. Yeah, I think that was like a good a, a clutch move. But I think that's a that's a perfect one, man. Yeah. I think that's perfect. What do you value most in a friendship? I mean, really, it's humor. You know, I feel like most of my friends, like, really, the biggest thing we've all had in common is, like, sense of humor. Like, we've been able to joke around with each other. And to me, that's just, that um, provides so much uh, sort of relief and mm. uh, support, you know, when you're able to just... Uh, share a laugh with people. I think that's the most important thing. I think that's a good, good one. 
What roles do love and affection play in your life? Um, major roles. <laughs> <laughs> Big ones? I don't, I mean, I just, I think that's like a fundamental need that people have, you know, like I, I think that that's, uh, that's probably the, the foundation of like mental stability and mental health is feeling uh, like you have a, a number of positive um, close relationships with people you trust and love and mm -hmm. um, can be affectionate towards. I think that's uh, that's sort of the foundation. So I, mean, I think it plays the, the most important role. How close and warm is your family? Do you feel your childhood was happier than most people's? Um, my, I, it's hard for me to gauge because uh, you know I don't I don't know. Uh, I think we're we're close in our own way. I think um, there is. I don't think we're the closest by any stretch. I think I've seen much closer. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I do believe my childhood was like extremely happy. Maybe even a little too happy. <laughs> um, but uh, but then again, like you know, I'm I'm sure that uh, there's like a, a tendency to sort of look back with rose-colored glasses on your on your childhood. I'm sure there were things that were very difficult about it, but again, in the line of work I'm in, it's sort of like relative to what uh, some people experience. Yeah. It, was, it was Disneyland the whole yeah. time. Yeah. How do you feel about your relationship with your mother? Um, I, feel, I feel good. I feel like it's, it's, it's definitely, it's complicated. I feel like it's definitely gone through different stages, but like right now, I feel like we're in a good place and uh, we have a nice sort of adult relationship and we enjoy each other's company and uh, talking to each other and that's, um, you know, I, I, I'm happy with that. That's what it's all about. Complete this sentence, I wish I had someone with whom I could share... Uh, I wish I had someone with whom I could share um, <laughs> my anxiety, like my, my fear. I would like somebody to like help me out with that, cut that in half. To get that, maybe. Yeah. But, uh, but, you know, the good stuff, too. Mm -hmm. But, you know, somebody that, you know, you could talk to about stuff that's not necessarily so positive. Mm -hmm. you know? I agree, that's, tri that's tricky. I think that's... It, it, in, in the, <sighs> in the uh, effort to make it, like, less scary yeah. and overwhelming, not to just unload no. on somebody, yeah. but to, like, you know, and to reciprocate. Listen to. Sweating a little bit there, Danny. Huh? Got you in the hot seat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is it warm in here? It is. It's getting warm. Is it? I'll turn. I'll, I'll kind no, of turn this um, It's actually rather chilly in here. It's free. Okay. When did you last cry in front of another person? Oh, right. Or by yourself? And by yourself. And by Separate question. When did I last cry? I have a feeling it was like not too long ago, but I'm having trouble recalling it. Did you cry at Colby's wedding? No. <laughs> I didn't. You don't cry at weddings? No. Uh, no. I cried at, um, this wasn't the last time, this was a long time ago, but I cried at, uh, Alana once brought me to the wedding, uh, what's his name? Evan. Mm -hmm. Evan's wedding. Mm -hmm. Uh, whose brother passed away yeah. in 9-11. Yeah. And I remember that was a very bizarre experience. I felt like um, like the wedding itself was beautiful and it was, it was nice, but uh, the, I felt like a um, like the sadness was just mm. sort of like passing through me. It was mm. like, there, there was it was under the surface, but it was like palpable. Mm -hmm. And eventually like it would just became overwhelming. Mm. And like I started crying in that wedding and like I couldn't stop. It was a very bizarre experience. Um, uh, cause I don't, I wasn't, I, you know, I don't really know those people. Yeah. It was just kind of like, it was just this like electric current that was just like, yeah, undeniable. It's, it's amazing how that's possible, right? Like yeah. you can be that tuned into 
uh, something just by virtue of there being a bunch of other humans around, even ones that you're not close with, you yeah. really you can pick that up and, and feel it, which is, I think that's one of the amazing things about being human. Yeah. We do have that built-in empathy stuff. Yeah, but I'm, I'm having trouble remembering more recent. More recent I'm sort ones. of like blocking, which is interesting. Okay. But, uh, well, yeah. you, can, you know, you can examine yourself. <laughs> On your own time. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Was that the last one? Nope. Uh, another four to go. What, if anything, is too serious to be joked about? Uh, I had this, like, kind of a similar answer as you do. I think, obviously, there's a time and a place, <laughs> but, like, you know, uh, I, I think, like, we, you know, joking and humor is, like, a very important part of coping and processing uh, trauma, and um, I really don't think there's anything that, like, you can't joke about if it's done in, like, in, in a you know, in a, in a positive way or in a way that's supposed to kind of like help you process and overcome things, you know. Yep. I think humor is a very important coping mechanism. That's cool, man. If you were to die this evening with no opportunity to communicate with anyone, what would you most regret not having told someone? Why have you not told them yet? Why haven't you told them yet? Um, I think... Uh, I don't... Yeah, I think it would probably be something with my dad. I think, like, uh, I would regret not having sort of had a more sort of, like, connected, uh, in-depth conversation with him or sort of expressed some things um, to him. I think there's a lot in that relationship that's kind of, like, going unsaid, and I'm not sure what I'm waiting for. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just, it's difficult, you know, yeah. given a our history and our relationship to sit down and have a talk like that but it's definitely something I like put off just because I think it would be it's big, hard and uncomfortable to some big extent. Thing, yeah. yeah. Big thing. Yeah, it's hard to find moments to do that yeah. without like building it up even more. <clears throat> yeah. When you're supposed to do like call him up and be like I want to have a talk with you dad. Right, yeah, yeah. That feels weird. Yeah, because that's not really a relationship. You know? Yeah. Like, we don't, yeah. That's not how we interact with one another. Yep. It would be like a, a real sort of paradigm shift. And, uh, yeah. It's kind of easier not to do that. But I hear you. Um, yeah, man, you know, I don't know. Do you guys ever hang out, just the two of you? No, we'd have, like, it's, it's, a, it's a... It's, it's too rare, right? Yeah, it's like we're not... We're, we're okay on a very sort of, like, surface level, but, like, at a certain point. Also, he's, like... Not to get into a whole thing, but like he's he's like kind of, he's getting older. Yeah. He's like kind of yeah, there, yeah. So yeah. There's uh there's some things going on that I think also make that difficult make to have sort of like a connected conversation. Yeah. But um but that's okay. never really been our our thing. So okay. that, I think that that would be it. Um. That's hard. Yeah. Yeah. This gets real at the end. Yeah, so man. It's, <laughs> you can keep it light, but it's it's hard to keep it light all the way up until the end. Yeah. Your house containing everything you own All right, yeah. catches fire. After saving your loved ones and pets, you have time to safely make a final dash to save any one item. What would it be and why? Um, it's got to be a possession, right? So, uh, I mean, I, I guess uh, the first thing that comes to mind is my guitar. Hmm. I just feel like throughout my life, like that's the one possession that's like I've stayed sort of interested in and connected to like the whole time like other things have kind of like and it's ebbed and flowed like there's been times I've been more interested in it and less interested in it but I feel like it never it never fully gets like tossed by the way it's always important to, to some extent so I guess I would grab that it's very replaceable though I don't know if, yeah. I don't know if that's great I don't know it's important to you yeah token whatever I mean I you know hard to place too much value on any one material yeah. thing. I don't want to say my like computer, even though it's probably... Like, <laughs> it's probably oh my good. god! I need my files! Yeah. My porn! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, of, all the, of all the people you're close with, yeah. whose death would you find most disturbing? Yeah, I and, about and why? Yeah, this is a... This is about, I, I mean, honestly, like, probably my nephew. Yeah. I mean, right. that would be fucking crazy. Yeah. Uh, I think most disturbing, definitely. That's, I mean, that's, that, that's totally sensible, yeah. Having someone younger than you die would yeah. be. 
Yeah. But very, yeah. very, very. That's a that's upsetting. a rough one. Yeah, it is a rough one. Congratulations, Danny. Thank you. You've ah, lived well you've lived Thanks. through the gauntlet. Nice. Yeah, How many questions did I miss? Just a couple. Just <clears throat> uh, what is your most treasured memory? Uh, um, uh, well, I was actually thinking about this uh, on the walk just now. I mean, I'm sure I have ones from earlier, but uh, I have a, a happy place that I go to, which is my memory of... Uh, 2003, I was in Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. and on the day we were to leave, I woke up extra early and grabbed a surfboard Diego. and paddled out. And uh, I was bobbing up and down in the surf. <laughs> Just make less noise. And um, it, I mean, it was beyond beautiful, and it felt like a wave came, and there was some kind of fish like swimming inside the wave. And it was just, I felt very like grateful and happy and content for this like perfect moment in a way that I don't usually feel. So that was, uh, that's, that's a memory that I go back to a that's lot. That's awesome. That sounds beautiful to me. Yeah. Uh, what's your most terrible memory? <laughs> Two uh, minutes later, yeah, that fish yeah. turned out to be a shark that... and it ate my leg. <laughs> exactly. Uh, my m most terrible memory got to think my most terrible memory is not completely accessible to me. Mm. Uh, well, then is it even a memory? I believe it is. Bum, bum, bum. I believe it's, it's in there somewhere. I don't believe memories have to be conscious mm -hmm. uh, in order to be called memories. Okay, but, so by, 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 the, by very but, definition, you would say that it's impossible to, yeah. to, to access... I would tend to think the, that's right. The declarative portion of yeah. your most terrible memory. Yeah. That's fine. But okay. that's also an excellent way of avoiding telling us what right. your most terrible memory is. Yeah, I mean, I'm having <laughs> a hard time. Um, terrible memory. The most terrible memory. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I can think of some bad ones, but like, they yeah. all seem kind of like on a more superficial level. Okay. I do remember one where I was, <laughs> uh, I showed up for uh, my SAT 2s, mm. uh, the, psycho the psychology, no, the GRE 2, the subject one, mm -hmm. uh, for psychology because I was going to apply to grad school. Mm -hmm. And uh, the guard was like, yeah, this was yesterday. Oh. And, uh, oh, no. That wasn't a good one. So that was a bad one. Okay. I'm sure there's worse ones. That's a good one. Uh, okay. And then, if you knew that in one year you would die suddenly, yeah. would you change anything about the way you are living and why? Yeah, I would. I would. Uh, I would take more action. I think I, hmm. uh, I get a I'm very anxious person. I get sort of paralyzed in my own head a lot, and I talk myself out of doing a lot of things. Um, and I think I would. Hopefully, <laughs> if I knew I was going to die in a year, I would. I would. I would improve on that, and I would just do things without thinking about them too much. Cool. And then the last one is, what does friendship mean to you? Although we did already do. Yeah. What, is you, what do you value most in the friendship? Uh, friendship means to me, yes. Uh, friendship means, um, you know, just sort of being there, you know, being available, um, particularly when things are not going so well, mm. you know, um, uh, just being a resource and being sort of like available to, uh, to take on some of the other person's um, anxiety or stress or yep. uh, disappointment or whatever it is. And, yep. You know, Share something with that. Yep. Cool, man. All right.